Imagine you're a person who's always lived in warm weather with lots of beaches and sun. But then, let's say you got a great job offer that requires you to move somewhere above the Arctic Circle with lots of ice and snow and cold weather. And it's an amazing offer, like everything you've ever dreamed of doing. But as fulfilling as saving the polar bears, or getting to do cutting-edge climate change research, or taking stunning wildlife photography, or whatever your life's work is, moving from the equator to the Arctic is a lot. And your first impulse might be to feel overwhelmed, like it's too big a change and you can't do it. And that's understandable. But if we think it through and break it down, each of the overwhelming elements of this big move could be addressed. Like researching and trying on the clothing you need, or trying new foods that are common there, might help things feel more manageable. Or you could pump yourself up by watching videos of winter pastimes that might be an adventure. Snow kayaking is pretty cool. A big task is much more manageable when there's some thought and planning involved. And writing projects can work the same way. Not really knowing what a writing project will be like is often the source of many of our defeated feelings about writing. But the invention and planning stages of the writing process are there to help us figure out what the project is, how to break it into manageable pieces, and even how to enjoy writing. Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and welcome to Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition. Tackling a big task or project can feel daunting, like stepping out into the unknown or exploring a new frontier. Not knowing what to do or feeling that we can't possibly move forward with our writing is actually part of writer's block, and it can really stress us out or lead us to think that we don't like or aren't good at writing. Like when I'm stuck, I know I can get sucked down rabbit holes researching all the weird stuff that catches my eye. Like, did you know that many hummingbirds have iridescent feathers on their necks called gorgets, a name that comes from the metal collars knights wore? Birds are amazing. But a big part of why writer's block occurs isn't about how good we are at writing, or even whether we like it or not. It can be about not recognizing that writing is a process, and every step is valuable. Just like we'd be overwhelmed if we suddenly parachuted into a cold climate after decades in the tropics, expecting to just start writing and have pure gold pour from our fingertips is a recipe for stress. Like take Mel, who's been wanting to try comedy writing for a long time. Their only experience has been telling jokes verbally with friends, but Mel hopes that volunteer writing for a local comedy magazine will be a path to a career in comedy. So Mel sits down to start drafting their first article for the magazine, thinking that good ideas should just flow like they do in Mel's funny conversations with friends. Instead, it takes a really long time. Mel doesn't feel great about the results, and the editor kindly points out that the process might be the issue, not Mel's sense of humor. They suggest Mel tries reading a couple of issues of the magazine and then just free writing for 10 minutes. Then, when they found a few good ideas, plan out an overall arc for the piece. Basically, what the editor suggested is for Mel to use invention, which is the phase of the writing process where we give ourselves space to come up with lots of ideas. So now, instead of expecting inspiration to hit like a lightning bolt, Mel tries a more formal approach by setting a timer and writing as much as they can in just a few minutes. And using free writing, Mel finds a couple different ideas that feel way stronger and funnier than their first attempt. So since formally working through invention was so helpful, they also set aside time for planning, which is the phase where Mel comes up with next steps and an order for how they're going to write each element. They create an outline that includes different paragraphs in the article and punchline options. By the time Mel is actually typing out the sentences of the piece, they realize that they're already on track to generate something way stronger and better suited to the magazine's style. Invention and planning worked well this time to decrease stress and increase effective writing. But Mel would probably also find that every time they put the steps into practice, they refine a bit and get even better, gaining new comedy writing literacies over time. And it feels good to get better and better at writing using a process you can repeat over and over. Now, it's important to recognize that in this course, we're going to talk about the writing process in general, but everyone figures out what techniques work for them. So let's explore the invention and planning phases a bit more to understand all they can offer and how we can start applying them to our writing. Really, invention is a step specifically made for the times when we don't know what to do quite yet, 
or our writing isn't accomplishing what we want it to. An invention can take a lot of different forms. Like, it might look like something without a lot of structure. Just one person, alone in a room, with no resources, trying to call forth ideas. But that sounds hard, and during invention, we want techniques that generate ideas, like the free writing that Mel used. Or looping, which is when we do a series of free writes that build on each other. Or affinity walls, where we organize separate ideas visually by grouping them together. These have all been shown to work well in a variety of writing contexts. They really bring out your ideas and give you something to work with. We talk about those techniques more in a later episode, but for now, realize that we can bring tools to our invention process. Basically, we don't have to jump into writing without any kind of preparation. Structured invention activities like free writing and looping help us keep going, rather than giving it up at step one because we aren't instantly happy with our ideas. Many of these techniques are also iterative, or dependent on doing a defined process over and over and seeing how our ideas change. This persistence is key to getting from our service ideas into the stuff that will work best for us. Like part of Mel's challenge was that they started working from the first decent ideas they had, but free writing forced them to keep writing for a set time, which meant they had to dive deeper into part of an idea or come up with more ideas to keep writing. In some versions of free writing, after a few minutes, Mel would have selected one or two things to then free write about for another few minutes, and so on until their time was up. This way, they were able to refine their topic to one that led to success. Obviously, some people's first ideas work out fine, but to consistently get enough good ideas in a bunch of contexts, invention gives you space to grow your idea stockpile. Whether you're a professional writer or someone just trying to make it through all the writing we have to do in school, formally doing invention is a skill that we can practice and keep improving our abilities. Rather than being born with a set amount of creativity, we can expand our invention capabilities over time. So instead of feeling like maybe today we'll be able to come up with something, we can turn to step-by-step -step formal invention techniques that should consistently yield us ideas. That being said, expanding our well of ideas may leave us with a lot, but not a clear path forward through all the good new options. That's where planning or organization becomes important. Planning in writing is focused on putting all the ideas together in a way that will make sense and helps us know what to do in what order. Plenty of writers jump straight into drafting after they come up with informal ideas, only to get discouraged when they realize they aren't sure what should be done first. Other times, they create a full draft only to realize it doesn't meet all the objectives of the project. But plans help us with all sorts of things, like how much time to budget for this assignment versus other assignments, and what tasks make sense to do right now versus which ones actually aren't very time sensitive. And just like there are different ways to tackle invention, there are different planning strategies too. For one, different tasks require different levels of formal planning. Like a quick list of ordered tasks may suit some projects. In other cases, a thorough outline with bullet points and a set of detailed footnotes could be what we need to manage a larger project with multiple collaborators. And figuring out what you need and knowing how much detail to put into our plans is part of developing our planning skills. As we practice, we'll sometimes realize that making a 17-page list of steps to write this one important email was, in fact, overkill. Each plan gives us a better sense of what works for us. Again, we'll talk more later on in the series about different planning techniques, but for now, we can think about two big categories. Macro planning tends to focus on the major pieces in a project. This could be determining the different pages to include in a website or the overall narrative arc of a novel with what will happen at the beginning, middle, and end. Macro planning can save a lot of time down the road by helping us know the full scope of a project. And micro planning is getting into more details. It might be a chapter-by-chapter -chapter outline of each character's actions in a novel. Or for a website, it might include notes on what graphics we want to include, how much text and what kinds, and any key links we want to include in each of the pages. Microplanning is a valuable tool for feeling more confident about the direction of a project and exactly how long it will take. Basically, the more details we work out in planning, the faster and clearer the drafting process can be. So there are lots of ways to incorporate invention and planning into your writing process, and we'll keep showing the different ways they can be used and intersect. For me, after having my aha or that seems weird moment when reading, I start researching. 
And while I'm researching, I make lots and lots of notes with additional questions and observations. In some ways, this invention stage is also where I start my drafting process. Invention and planning give us techniques to get from that wide-eyed moment when we face a new writing task to the point where we're ready to start drafting and confident of what steps we'll need to take. Parachuting into the middle of the writing process by skipping invention and planning is a recipe for stress and less effective writing, just like parachuting into the Arctic Circle in your swimsuit would be a recipe for, well, nothing good. While there are always exceptions, it's generally a good idea to follow the rule at first, at least until you know how to adapt it to fit your own process. For most of us, when we put our brains to work with formal invention techniques and organize those thoughts into a clear plan, we're much better prepared for even the most complicated writing task. As we continue practicing, the benefits of working through all of the process steps help us see that our ability to write isn't a fixed reserve, but rather a growing set of abilities and strengths. Each time you try an invention technique or make a plan, you get the chance to use all your experiences to make those strategies work better for you. Experiment with a specific technique and see if making more space for invention and planning in your next writing task leads to a better, less stressful experience. If not, there are lots more to try, which we'll talk about more in a future episode. Thanks for watching Study Hall Rhetoric and Composition, which is part of the Study Hall Project, a partnership between ASU and Crash Course. If you liked this video and want to keep learning with us, be sure to subscribe. You can learn more about Study Hall in the videos produced by Crash Course and ASU in the links in the description. See you next time.